Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening, family. Welcome. Welcome, welcome to the mental house with me, your illustrious host, Khadija. You know, I got an email today and it quite disturbed me today um, because someone was asking me that I think that their mother was a narcissist and she was explaining some of the behavior that was being, um, actually I should say abuse, that was being taunt, uh, thrown upon her by her mother in certain things. And what stood out today, I guess, is because she's been started therapy. And she's um, coming to realization and the anger of her mother checking her to see if she was a virgin. That is pretty much one of the characteristics of a female narcissist, a mom, and the relationship that she has with her daughter, where um, that kind of behavior, again, it, it, it's not surprising at all. And I hate to say it, but it's true. I was trying to explain to somebody my first experience with a, um, y'all see my dog is here, um, my situation with my mother and some of the narcissistic behavior that she exhibited, which I was totally uncomfortable about that had sexual overtones too. One was making me show body parts. And it's interesting because um, one of the most horrific things that I can recall my mother doing, which is just pathetic, is um, I've stated before, I have a, a few cousins um, and we're all around the same age, you know, maybe a year or two tops um, the, in terms of the difference of our ages. And there's about four or five, maybe five or six of us that are that close in age. So we kind of joke, you know, as adults, we say, wow, we know what our parents were doing. They were all pregnant at the same time and things like that, right? But one of the things that my mother used to do, and then, and they all used to take part in it as well, is to make us show our body parts to each other and to them so they can determine how much hair that we have or how, how uh, big the dots on our chest were, um, how we were developing. And I was extremely uncomfortable with it all the time and I never liked it and my mother knew it. However, she would force me to do it. And I would get so angry with her because I would be the only one that was resisting most of it. I had a couple cousins and they didn't care because that's probably all the attention they was getting anyway, but I didn't like it. I didn't like that type of attention. Um, I much liked attention I got when I sang. If I have to compare the two. That attention was pure. This kind of attention felt so derogatory and dirty, and it just felt like my mother was in control of my body. It, it was like she was in control of every aspect of my being. And for anybody that knows that, or knows anything like that or about that, 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 that parent is clearly some kind of personality disorder. Yes, it is. It's not healthy or normal for a parent to do those type of things. And as I got older, and I would see my mother doing the same thing to other children, and I would tell her, I was like, uh-uh, you need to stop that. That's not appropriate. What you're doing, that, and of course, it would injure her. So, of course, then I was dealing with a narcissistic injury, which would mean that that person would just send all the flying monkeys at me uh, relentless. 
But I really didn't care because I knew at that point um, something in the milk wasn't clean. Something was disgusting and repulsive about this behavior. And then I began to see that it was no way normal. However, I didn't have a name. Um, there was no books talking about narcissism and personality disorders. So I didn't know. I'd just be like, that's the way she is. But the older I got, when I thought about how much autonomy she never gave any of us and how she was the judge, jury, and executioner over our bodies even, it lets me know how severely damaged that she was. She was so damaged that she wanted to control every little aspect, every aspect of my life. Um, and the rest of her kids, like some of us conform better than others. Some of us hid more than others. I was the kind of kid that could hide a lot more. Um, however, I, I, when I found out and when, when I began to compare notes with other people and other incidents and other things later in life, that I realized that I was dealing with somebody who was extremely, extremely narcissistic um, or had some type of personality disorder. However, I know that my mom told me, she said, I don't know if I know how to love. I don't know if I ever really loved your father, and I don't know if I even know how to love. And as far as narcissist is concerned, that's the most honest thing that she's ever said to me. And I respect and I appreciate her for that. Because she recognized something in her that wasn't right. You know, she got married uh, uh, fairly young. Her mother died. Uh, on her when she was fairly young so she had to fend for herself and she used to tell me about the days where she would be so hungry that she would just have to eat drink pet milk um and the people that she was living with my mother from st louis and she was saying how um back in the day when her mom was alive you know i guess her mom had um well my aunt was an eastern star my mom worked my grandmother worked at uh viola by the way, worked at uh, I think one of the big uh, hotels in um, St. Louis. You know, places where um, she would talk about Billy Estine, Louis Pasteur, and all the big stars that would come to this hotel that her mom worked at. Um, you know, or she, they would give, it's funny, nowadays you give kids money. But back then, you know, some of the people would give them apples to take home to her children. Say, give your children this apple or give your daughter. You know, and she said she would, my mother being a middle child, said she would always feel left out because she would be like, well, you tell them people, you got three girls. You can't just give one to um, my aunt, which is the baby girl. There was a lot of uh, abuse in the household because... I believe my grandmother was an alcoholic. My mother would never say that. But if she, if she did, it was always in a loving way because, of course, it's hard to say bad things about our parents. But her mother was an alcoholic. And her father was murdered. Her father was murdered uh, over politics. Okay? Dewey. You know, I remember back in the day. Um... I think my father, my grandfather was a Dewey. Um, I think he campaigned or, or, or was a Dewey follower or whatever. Anyway, he killed a guy over it. And years later, he was poisoned by the woman's husband because she, she enacted revenge against him. She said she always would, and she did because he killed her husband. So that's some um, volatile traumatization, which a lot of us have. Uh, and with that being said, also my mother being that middle child, she took up so much abuse, so much. 
she would tell me often about watching her parents fight, uh, her, her, her mother fight um, the different men or the different guys that her, I guess my grandma dated, and one in particular. And one of my aunts stabbed him in the rear end with a fork, stabbed him in his butt because he was jumping on um, their mother. So I know my mother experienced a lot of abuse. She used to also tell me how they used to get under the table and they would sing this song. My mama don't like us. My mama don't like me. You know, and then that would be the way that the mother would stop fighting. Like, oh, y'all stop. Y'all making my babies upset. And I'm saying to myself, what kind of damn house did they grow up in? They used to make moonshine. They used to drink. So my mother saw a lot of dysfunction. And so with that being said, she carried it on to us. My mother also told me a story one time about how her mother beat her all the way from the corner around the because there was this prostitute who had a whole bunch of white kids, mixed kids. And my mother used to love to go over there and play with the kids' hair, right? And her mom told her, don't go down there no more because they found a dead white man in the back of the uh, house. You know, it was like a house of ill reproof, like my aunt had. Because uh, back then, people used to hustle. There wasn't no welfare. So for those of y'all who are saying, why didn't they get on food stamps? Wasn't no food stamps. Wasn't no welfare. You had to get it how you lived. You got it any way you could. Um, like James Brown said, he used to, you know, he used to take the soldiers down to the whorehouses and stuff so he could earn a few nickels and dimes. However, let me get back to this story. The white man was murdered behind the house down the street. So, of course, my grandma, I never met my grandma, by the way. I never laid eyes on her. But I communicate with her in spirit all the time. She told my mom never to go down there and don't go down there. And my mother went down there anyway and continued to go down there because she wanted to comb these kids' hair so bad, I guess. My grandma got mad, found out, and beat her all the way from that house all the way to her house, which I thought was enormously cruel. Enormously cruel. Real cruel. And my mother would get beat a lot. She got beat a whole, whole, whole lot. And that's why all she knew how to do was beat. So, when I think about those type of things like that, and then being a the middle child, you know, I knew it was no Oprah. So the people didn't know how to get help. Now we're just not talking about these things. So a lot of times I think about my mother's existence and I get very sad. I think about not just my mother, um, a lot of the women that grew up in that time period. It's just sad. Women are all, already beat down anyway. When you put it in those terms like that, it becomes extremely sad. You know, so I want you to know that no, it's not healthy. Uh, what your mom is doing and what she's done and the fact that when you confront her with it she can't respond to it it's because key they, they lack empathy you know but those are things that you have to fight through those are things that you have to um, clean those wounds out because those are the things that affect you in your relationships. And in your relationship, you won't show up as the best person you could be because you got, as Eric and Badu say, bags, too many bags. <laughs> You're going to miss the bus because you got too much stuff. All right, you guys, if you like what you hear, please like, subscribe, share. And I'm going to see you in the next video.